GNOME 47 is back in the works and some exciting updates are being made. There are many merge requests currently with GNOME 47, the popular desktop environment known for its user-friendly design, customization, and productivity features. They've also been focusing on accessibility lately, which is great. We're going to be talking about two new features that are coming to GNOME 47 and why you might want to update it as it brings in a new feature that has been in the works for over two years at this point. So currently GNOME 47 is open for development with 115 current issues, 215 merge requests, and 19 people participating in making this happen. Completed issues have such things as updates to the GNOME calendar, including GNOME maps, the image viewer, papers, files, and much more. But those aren't the two things that I want to show you today, as this popular Linux desktop environment, which some people remain critical of, especially with how it handles bug reports and developer interaction with the user, it still has a beautiful design that's very user-centric and simplistic. That's why it's one of the most popular popular desktops and even ships with Ubuntu as the default desktop environment. GNOME is definitely a powerhouse and the overall sentiment here is a mix of appreciation and frustration as they put in new tools including one where you won't need an extension anymore and I'm excited about which is adding accent colors around your windows instead of having to get, to get an extension. A very popular extension with over 44,000 downloads is the custom accent colors. That's right with GNOME 47 we are receiving support for our own custom custom accent colors. This right here is the installed extension that you would have to get in order to actually enable this on the GNOME desktop. This here provided seven accent colors and would be applied to GTK4 and GTK3 applications on the GNOME shell. Well, no more of this. Instead, GNOME 47 is set to have that feature enabled by default and you will be able to select your accent color from what I can tell, just about any color on the color wheel as we gain the custom accent color support directly on the native GNOME desktop environment. Quite exciting for those of us who like to further customize our desktop environments and the colors on our shell. A lot of us are going to be happy to see this change happening with the latest GNOME. But this isn't the biggest change that is happening. There, there has been some development for the last two years. It's been ongoing. But before we get to that, make sure to smash that like button for me if you like this type of video. Moving on to making X11 dependency optional. That's right. An excellent change is being announced from an issue that was created over two years ago by a user making X11 completely optional and allowing Mutter being built in as only a Wayland compositor. So there was a lot of things to do over the years and there's actually a checklist here which I'll be providing a link in the description below so you can check it out yourself. Many, many files had to be changed including libraries and with most of the checklist items completed at this point, there has been an announcement that with GNOME 47, there's going to be a build allowing the disabling of X11. So what does this mean? Disabling X11 by default will allow the system to actually have less dependencies, making it a suitable environment with less bloat if you choose to go down the Wayland route. A lot of modern Linux desktop environments are switching, adopting Wayland over X11, but seeing this shows that their continued support for Wayland is becoming more and more, and that's because Wayland has proven to be more performant, at least in the way it handles compositing and rendering graphics over X11. There's better hardware and modern architecture support, better multi-DPI support, and overall a cleaner code base just because it's more modern and there's less to it at this point. However, there are some niche graphics features that still rely on X11. So disabling X11 all the way and making that the default probably won't be the case for quite a few years yet, but allowing the disabling of X11 is an interesting development that is happening in GNOME. I want to hear about what you think about this. Are you going to be disabling X11 in GNOME? Are you going to be upgrading to GNOME 47 when it comes out? I want to know. Also, if you want to learn about how GNOME has been running on a deficit for many years now, check out my latest video about it. I'll also put that in the description below. You can also check it out here above. While the transition from X11 to Wayland has been gradual, this is a big leap for the GNOME desktop experience. And these exciting GNOME 47 features are again focused on user friendliness, a more modern and lightweight desktop experience. Stay tuned for more updates from me. Catch me in a great community on discord and i'll catch you in another video thanks for watching linux can be hard to understand but i take the most commonly used terms commands and subjects in linux and i break them down into simple to read documents including linux terms flashcards a checklist a cheat sheet and a mind map and if you're ready to level up your linux experience and knowledge go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets